أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my distinguished sisters in Islam this is the sixth episode of our book صفات المؤمنة الصادقة the attributes or qualities of a true believing woman written by our great sister Nawal bint Abdullah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on her she continues today from page 27 that wa hakaza takunu sifat al-mu'mina as-sadiqa what we have been describing to you are the qualities of true believing woman and then she said ukhti al-mu'mina who oh, my sister who is a true believing woman kam taktaru al-kathirat min nisa'iha how many of our ladies or of our women have been deceived by the by the worldly things and they, they pay no attention eh, to the hereafter how many of our women she wants to buy this she wants to buy this she wants this she wants that and all these have nothing to do with our hereafter how many of the oh, how many of women have been deceived by this fataharisu ala an yakuna athasa baytaha min ahdathi she always want her furniture the furniture she will, she will have in her room should be the recent one the latest furniture that is always a concern her major concern is how she will we, how, how she will she will get access to the latest furniture to put in her room she has no concern with the year after and this world is just a little place you has little time to live here you've seen people that have been born before you here and they have died you possibly you have also born somebody that have died you have younger sisters that have died you have uh, elders or maybe your parent have died you will also die the world of the, the the life of the year after is the permanent one this one is just a temporary one so why should your concern be how to get a recent furniture in your room majorly ma majorly women today their concern is how to get the most beautiful uh, furniture and the most expensive furniture aglal athas the most expensive and the most the, 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 the most beautiful furniture in her room and that is all she pays no attention to the instructions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we look at the lives pattern the life pattern of the wives of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam especially the wives of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who have access to every found they were rich but they did not do as we are doing today we told you that uh, sadat aisha gave out 70000 dirham for sadaka according to orwa tibun zubair sadat aisha but she has no more than two or three crores today you don't even have anything you are poor you are needy but your cons your concern is not even in the year after you still want this world how to get the good furnitures expensive one this and that what do we, what will you tell allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the year after my sister if you look at the wives of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they were rich they have access to money but they utilize those money for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know the position of this world but if you look at the 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 buildings or the houses of the wives of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you will be surprised even though they were very rich they can build mansions by them they can build castles by them but they didn't the pro the, the, this wife of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and lived together with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in small small rooms the rooms in which they lived in were not in mansions even though they have money 
that even if, if they want to build anything that is modern Martian, they could have built it. But why they did not? They understand the actuality of this world. What this world stands for is a temporary place, not a permanent place. And that is why they did not invest in it. Instead, they invest in the permanent place. They use their money instead of buying clothes, buying furniture, buying bed, buy this and that. They utilize their money for the year after because it is the permanent place they have to go and then stay there forever. You must die. Believe me or not. And then you should also prepare for this death. If you know that you die. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lived, lived in these small rooms together with his wife. Even though he has access to money, even if he wants to live in the most beautiful place in this world, he can do that. But he didn't. It was reported by al Hassan al-Basri, one of the great students of, uh, of the Sahabas of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that al Hassan al-Basri said that, uh, Buyuta azwaj in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi khilafati Uthman. Al Hassan said that uh, I used to enter into the houses or rooms of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during the reign of Uthman ibn Affan. Fa'atana awalu sukufaha biyedi. And any if, if I raise my hand up like this, I will touch the roof of their rooms. Very small rooms. These are the people that have millions of naira, but they utilize them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They should have used this money to build mansions and castles, but they didn't. Because they know that this year after is the permanent place and that is the place they work for. According to al Hassan al basri When I Walid, uh, one of the uh, Hulafa of uh, Banu Umayyah, uh, wanted expanding the mosque of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this this uh, this expansion will have to consume the houses of the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he destroyed them and built uh, another houses for them somewhere. Uh, uh, sorry, and built and, and built a uh, sorry the masjid because all the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by then have died. When he has destroyed them and he has expanded the masjid, one of the great scholars of the Tabi'un, I mean the students of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ by name Sayyid Ibn Musayyib, once Sayyid Ibn Musayyib heard about this, Sayyid Ibn Musayyib regretted that if I had it from the initial, I will advise the Khalifa not to destroy those rooms because those rooms will serve as a lesson for those who will come after them. Those who think that the, the, the everything hangs in this world will come and meet these rooms of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu who were the wives of the Prophet and they were rich people, but they still managed to live in these and small, small rooms. All the wealth they had, they utilized them and give them out as sadaqah in the course of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But if you talk about the furnitures, and the furniture of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu what they have in, in their rooms, or what they have as beds, what they have as wardrobe as we do today. It is reported by Sayyidatu Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on her, that the bed of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or let me say that uh, the, the bedding of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was made out of skin. That is where he slept on. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has opportunity of if he wanted sleeping on gold or silver or diamond or pearls or anything expensive than even these things he would do. But he didn't. He was sleeping on a bed that was made out of skin. And he was contented. What is the reason of their contentment? Because they understand the position of this world. They know what this world stands for. Oh, you, my sister, if you understand the position of this world, then you will you will be careful in doing, in doing anything you want to do in this world. But the big lesson is that 
how many people have heard these statements we have read to you and how many of us can walk according to it or change for better if you change is better because this world cannot take you anywhere it's just a small place temporary small place let me describe it like this temporary small place where some people think that they will be dwelling here forever and ever. Highest you can spend is 100 years. And any time after 70, 80 years, you are useless. Then you are waiting to go eh, for your permanent dwelling where you did not make any preparation for. You didn't prepare for it. So you are prepared for to fail. That's, that's just as the saying says that uh, failure to prepare is another preparation to fail. We meet another episode, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us. Barakallahu fina wa fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.